Good morning, Grace Fellowship family. Can we get our feet this morning? Hallelujah. How many thankful for the Lord? All he's done for us. Amen. This is a new song we introduced a couple weeks ago called My Testimony. Worship with us. darkness run for cover but the miracle that I just can't get over my name is registered in heaven and I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power yes I do still the miracle that I just can't get over song talks about how God will bring things that you may think are dead back to life. Somebody say amen. 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 Look at somebody say it's going to live again. Hallelujah.
Saturn day was silent, but surely it was through. But since when has the possible ever stopped you? But Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. But since when has the possible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Cause this is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Cause this is the sound of dry bones rattling. things that be not as though they were it may look like your situation is dead but to God it is alive amen he calls those things that be not as though they were as though they were hallelujah in other words it may be the situation that your child has gone astray or that your family seems broken but God calls it mended God calls it whole God calls it as he sees it not as we see it with our natural eyes I'm telling you the Holy Ghost is in this house this morning Whatever you need, you can reach out and receive from him. His presence is here. Hallelujah. We want to worship him this morning. Come on, Father, we bless you. We praise you. We thank you for the blessing that you've declared over our lives. Let your presence just fill this place. Touch and change lives. Move, God, and do only what you can do. We surrender ourselves to you this morning. Hallelujah. worship him this morning we magnify you Lord
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turned his face toward you and give you peace.
Say, he is for me. Shout, he is for me. Amen. Paul said that if God be for us, who can be against us? It doesn't matter. Amen. If God is for you, it doesn't matter. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, thank you for this great day that you've given to us. Thank you, Father, that everything we possibly could ever need, you have provided for us. And Lord, we just declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that we are people of victory. We are more than conquerors. We are winners. And Father, we are overcoming in this present battle with COVID-19. We declare in the name of the Lord Jesus our covenant blessing of healing and protection, Father. We stand on your word. And Father, we pray for those today who are battling this disease. And I speak health and wholeness and wellness over them in the name of the Lord Jesus. I speak to these lung conditions. Lungs, be clear, be healed, be whole in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you that we have believed and therefore we have spoken in Jesus' name. Amen, everybody say amen. Shout amen. Clap your hands and rejoice. Oh, come on, clap him a little more. He's worthy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wave at somebody across the aisle. Smile at them. They might not have seen a smile all day. Amen. You're looking good this morning in the early service. Amen. You may be seated. So good to see you out. Michaela, come with uh, your, your announcements this morning. Amen. Good morning. We have a few announcements that we'd like to share with you all. First off is our baby dedication. That is on August the 23rd. We do ask that you go to graceforyou.com slash register to make sure your child is registered. And we know we have some babies as well as small children that have yet to be dedicated because of the virus not allowing us to come together. But we want to make sure that every child is included. So be sure to go on the website and register. That is on August the 23rd during our 1030 a.m. service. Um, speaking of babies, we know that Grace Fellowship is a growing church, and we have a lot of little ones. And during this time, we understand if you're not comfortable with taking them to the nursery or sending them into Grace Squad. So if your child does come does become discontent during a service, we ask that you step outside into the foyer. There's many screens where the service is viewable and you can watch there until the child is ready to come back into service. And we appreciate your understanding during this time as we all adjust together. Also, we have our first awakening service that is going to be this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Doors will open at 645. So parents and students, we ask that you don't arrive until around 645 because we want to make sure we keep our social distance in practice as well as a few other things that we have set into place. So we are excited about those things. And last but not least, if this is your first time at Grace Fellowship Church, you can see Grant outside at the tent where the main entry is. And he has a VIP package as well as a gift for you as our, as our way of saying welcome to church. Pastor. All right. Thank you. Amen. Man, you're looking so good this morning. The sun's shining beautiful. Uh, last week we had a rainy Sunday, didn't we? I think so. But anyway, uh, it's good to see you out uh, on this beautiful Sunday morning. And uh, we're excited that you are here in church. Let me just share a passage with you uh, over our offering. All our offerings are received at the door. And uh, let me just remind you, the ushers will assist you in your exit. So wait to be uh, given instructions at the end, but you can give your offering on your way out or give on the app, give uh, on the website. And this is very easy giving. And if you need help with that, Pam will be happy to help uh, set you up on that. All right, I have a passage here in Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 28. Before I read this from the New King James Version, uh, Jesus has just had the encounter with the rich young ruler and uh, this man is ruled by his possessions. And uh, Jesus makes a statement that it is difficult. It is hard for those who have riches to enter into the kingdom of heaven. He did not say it was impossible. 
He said it's hard. In other words, for those who are ruled by their possessions or their trust is in earthly possessions, it's difficult for them to let go of their trust in those riches and have simple trust in God. Well, in the midst of all that, uh, the disciples had a question. Peter had a question. This is where my text uh, for the offering begins, verse 28. It says, Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time, now everybody say this, say now in this time. It, it wasn't when they got to heaven, there are going to be rewards when you get to heaven. You do know that, amen. But he said now in this time, and uh, let me find my place, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time, Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. And so what I wanted to say to you here is really what I believe Jesus was saying was this. When you are sowing into the kingdom work, whether it is giving of yourself as they were, they had given up, I mean they had really given up a lot of things from the world's perspective. But Jesus was saying, when you sow yourself or you sow financially or you give in any means to the kingdom, there is a harvest, a blessing, now and this time, and also in eternity. So I just wanted to remind you that as you give to the work of God, there is a harvest. Say that right now. Say, there is a harvest. Amen. And sometimes you need to begin to walk around and just say, I'm in reaping season. I'm in reaping season. It's harvest time. Say that right now. Say it's harvest time. I, I've been telling Pastor Patty here for the last few weeks, I just reminding her, we're in harvest time. Amen. We're sowing. We've been sowing. We've been in the ministry for so long, I can't even remember how long. How long? How long? 30, I thought she said 45 years. I thought, sure. 35 years we've been in the ministry. Praise the Lord. So we've been sowing for 35 years. It's harvest time. <laughs> Amen. But you need to claim your harvest time. Praise the Lord and believe for the blessing of God on the labor and the giving that you've sown. Make this good confession this morning. Say, it is my joy to sow into the kingdom work of God. I receive by faith. My harvest time, it is harvest time. The windows of heaven are open. Blessings are poured out. There's not room enough to receive it. And the devourer is rebuked for my sake. Amen. Worship with them this morning. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought Deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters from my release. Oh, Yahweh, you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Sign that you are with me. The fire by night is a God and light to my feet. You found me, you found me, you freed me. Held back the waters from my release. Oh, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
Put our hands together and give praise for that this morning. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord another good hand clap this morning. Praise the Lord. While they're bringing my podium over and getting a set here, uh, I hadn't mentioned too much. I trust you are joining us on Wednesday nights for healing school. Praise the Lord. We are having, I, I've done a lot of healing uh, teachings over the years. I believe that this healing school uh, has the best information in it of uh, any teaching that we have done. And it, maybe it's because Pastor Patty's joined me. I'll give her the credit. But uh, if you have not watched those sessions, make sure you are watching online. We're up uh, to uh, week number five, I think. And uh, the Lord has been directing every week where we're going. And uh, it's been just amazing, some of the things he's given. So I encourage you, join us for Healing School. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. Let's, uh, we're going to look at our text scripture here, John 10, 10. We are in the Abundant Life series. And are you ready to live the abundant life? Amen. Shout, I'm ready. Praise the Lord. Uh, John 10, 10. This is our text for this, uh, this series uh, Jesus said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And what we've said in weeks past is the enemy's nature is revealed in this passage. He is a thief. Everybody say, the devil is a thief. Well, if he's a thief, the nature of the thief is always to steal to kill and to destroy. Now, if you're a thief in the natural, you can get saved and change, but the devil's had his opportunity. He's not going to change. Amen. And then Jesus reveals to us his nature or the nature of the Father, and that is, he says, I am come that they might have life. Everybody say life. life. And not just life, but that they might have it more abundantly. And we've said that means something more than or super abundant in quality and quantity, exceeding above the fullest measure, very highly beyond the regular measure. So Jesus says, I have come that you might have life, but not just have life. I'm going to give you life abundantly, or as we're saying in this series, the abundant life. Then we found out that God introduced himself to Abraham as El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. Everybody say more than enough. So he is the God of more than enough. Then last week, well actually two weeks ago, we talked about the abundance of grace. Last week we talked about the abundance of promises. And today I want to talk to you about the blessing of Abraham. And we're gonna look at a passage, Galatians 3, verse seven through 14, and uh, this passage reveals something to us that we are blessed with Abraham. Now, we talk a lot about the blessing of Abraham. We talk a lot about how God provided for Abraham. And Abraham was not just blessed. He was extremely blessed. And remember, God told him, said, I am the God who's more than enough. I am the all-sufficient one. So the all-sufficient one the God who is more than enough bless Abraham with more than enough. One thing you could say, we'll sum it up by this saying this, Abraham never just trudged through life barely getting by. Everything the man touched was blessed. Everything he put his hands to was blessed. And he was blessed with long life. 
and his descendants were blessed. The blessing of the Lord was upon his life, all right? But we're gonna find out, according to Galatians 3, that you and I are blessed with Abraham. Let's look at this passage. I wanna look at it on the screen, uh, beginning in verse seven. It says, therefore know that only those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. Now, let's catch something right there. He says that only those who are of faith are the sons or the children of Abraham. Now, are you of faith? Are you of faith? And so the ones he's talking about in this passage that are of faith are those who have by faith received the Savior. And you remember John said uh, that to as many as received him gave he the power to become the sons of God. He could have added there to as many as received him by faith, he gave the power to be born again to become the children of God. So the writer here, or, or Paul in Galatians says, only those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. So by faith, I am of the children of Abraham. I am a son of Abraham. Everybody say right. If you're born again, say, I'm the child of Abraham. It means you're, his, you, you're connected with him because Abraham walked by faith. You and I walk by faith. Give me the next verse in that, please. Verse eight. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles, that's us, by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you shall all the nations, or all the nations shall be blessed. Go on, please. So then, those who are of faith, everybody say, That's us. We are blessed with believing Abraham. So this verse says, Because we are of faith, we are of the children. We are the true children of Abraham, but we're not just the children of Abraham. We are blessed with our father Abraham. Amen. Go on to the next verse in that. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Next verse, please. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Talking about the sons of Abraham. Go on to the next verse, please. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. And I love this. Christ has redeemed us. Everybody say, that's us. He redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree that the blessing of Abraham. Everybody say Abraham was blessed. How many believes Abraham was blessed? But notice here that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. Say that's us. Say that's me that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. So this passage basically tells us Abraham was blessed. Everybody say Abraham was blessed. But we are blessed with him. Isn't that good news? If he was blessed and he was I'm blessed with him. So I need to know how he was blessed, why he was blessed, what he was blessed in. But before we jump into that, I need you to understand this passage reveals there is a blessing and there is a curse. And so a lot of people want to grab the blessing and ignore the curse. But before we can really understand how Abraham was blessed, we first have to understand the curse. So I want us to get an understanding of that. And uh, the first mention of the curse is found in Genesis 3, verse 17 through 19. Now, notice the first two chapters of Genesis do not contain a curse. But once Adam sinned, once the human race was in sin or in rebellion against God, then there is a curse 
in the earth. And Genesis 3, 17 through 19 reveals this. Let's look at it real quick. It says, then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it. Cursed, everybody say cursed. cursed. All right, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it. All the days of your life, both thorns and thistles. Now, how many of you realize thorns and thistles are not good? Nobody wants to grow thorns and thistles in their garden. If you got thorns and thistles, Coming up in your bean patch, you have a problem. Amen. These are in the curse. So he says, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. In other words, now you're going to have to extremely labor in so much you are going to break a sweat. I don't know if Adam and Eve had ever broken a sweat or not because they were tending a garden that was in the blessing of God, in the blessing realm, and I don't think they had to dig up weeds. I don't think they had to spray weed killer. They didn't have to do anything but go out there and just exercise dominion in the garden God had given to them. Say amen to that. So he says, in the sweat of your face, you will eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken for dust you are and to dust you shall return. So the last thing, your body will die as a result of this curse in the end. And we know that for the saint of God now being born again, death has lost its sting. That's a good place for you to say amen. So death is going to be swallowed up in victory and death for the saints is nothing more or less than a transition from this world into the world we have believed for and hoped for all of our life. Say amen to that. Well, what I want you to see here is there was and there is a curse in this earth. Now notice it got awful quiet right there. I said there was and there is a curse in the earth. And a lot of people want to blame God and figure out why God is causing this, why God is causing that, why God is moving in this, why does God allow tragedy, why does God, you know, in some places it's why is he sending sickness, why does he send famine? The answer to that is this, he is not sending these things. Newsflash, you are living on a cursed planet. You are living in a cursed world. And you don't have to go very far and look very far to see the curse at work. The curse is at work in this world that we are living in. But here's what I want you to see. The blessing of Abraham allowed a man of faith to live on a planet that was cursed and deal with the ground that was cursed to bring forth thorns and thistles. A man who was living upon a planet that was cursed was suddenly by faith going to be blessed and he would be blessed in a land that was cursed. Stay with me, all right? Genesis 12, verse one through three. This is the first blessing of Abram. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and in you I will curse them that curse you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So first of all, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. God says to Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And then he says, through you, through your descendants, and we realize that he's pointing toward the coming of Jesus and the coming of the new covenant in you, all the families that will join you in faith on this earth shall be blessed. 
Shout, I'm blessed with Abraham. Abraham. All right, let's go a little further in that declaration. I will bless you. God didn't need to say one thing more than simply, I will bless you. When God said, I will bless you, what he was saying is, I am empowering you to succeed in a world that is destined for failure. Are you alive? Are you awake? I am empowering you to succeed where the curse says you will fail. When the curse says what you sow will be overtaken by thorns and thistles because I say you are blessed All of a sudden, your crops will be blessed. Your herds will be blessed. Your family and descendants will be blessed. Your children will be blessed. Where the curse is trying to overtake you because I have declared my blessing on you, you will walk in a land that is cursed, but the curse will not overtake you. Shout, that's the blessing. All right, let's understand it. So he's saying, Abraham, you're gonna succeed in a land that has been cursed. God is declaring the opposite of the curse and the benefit is that you will be blessed in a land that has been cursed. And I wanna tell you, Abraham walked in it, we're gonna see it in just a minute, but he experienced that blessing Everything that he did become blessed. He was blessed coming in. He was blessed going out. He was above only and not beneath. He was the head and not the tail. He was blessed in every way because God declared the blessing on him although he's living in the midst of a curse. Wow. So understand this. Deuteronomy 28, which is now the law, comes out of what God did for Abraham. Because Deuteronomy 28 is written to the natural descendants of Abraham. And Deuteronomy 28 has about 14 or 15 verses of declared blessing, and then there is a declared curse for those who do not walk in the blessing, but we'll find out the choice as to which one you're in belong to you. All right, we'll find out in a minute. But Deuteronomy 28, verses two through eight, more clarity is given on what God said when he said, I'll bless you. I think more clarity is given. He said in Deuteronomy 28 verse two, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Other words, blessings are coming. Everybody shout, blessings are coming. And they're gonna pursue you and overtake you. All right, and then he clarifies even further. Verse three, blessed you shall be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will even cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They will come in against you one way, flee before you seven ways, and the Lord will command. Man, that's shouting ground. The Lord will command the blessing on your storehouses and in all that you put your hand to. He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. But what you need to understand was 
he still lived, Abraham's descendants are still living on an earth that is dealing with the curse. But the Lord said, I'm going to cause the land that was cursed suddenly to become a blessing for you. So I just came to proclaim to you today because the blessing of Abraham is on you. You may be on a cursed planet that is seemingly being overtaken, but you're still blessed because God has commanded his blessing on you. And I thought about command the blessing. How does he command the blessing? Through his word. When he sent his word and healed their diseases, he was commanding the healing blessing. When he sent his word and said, the windows of heaven will be open and blessings shall be poured out upon you that there shall not be room enough to receive it because you bring your tithe in. He was commanding the blessing and releasing the blessing through his word upon your life. The only question is, are you going to take it or are you going to let it go by? Shine, I'm blessed blessed. with Abraham. God's word translation said, the Lord will give you plenty of blessings. Say plenty of blessings. You will have many children. Now listen, I've got enough, all right? (laughs) I've got enough, all right? You will have many children. Your animals will have many offspring. Your soil will produce many crops. In the land the Lord will give you as he swore to your ancestors. Now, listen to this. This is not what the curse said in Genesis. The curse said the land will work against you and thorns and thistles will the land produce. But now that the blessing is commanded in the earth through Abraham, What God is actually declaring in Deuteronomy and declaring to Abraham is you can live in a land where the curse is, but because of covenant, because of covenant blessing, you can walk through a land where the curse is flowing, but the curse will not be able to overtake you. Lord have mercy. This is so good. I'm about ready to run the aisle. Shine, I'm blessed with Abraham. And then it's all summed up on Abraham in Genesis 24 1. Look at what he lived his life, but look at Genesis 24 1. Now, Abraham was old. Old here is a good thing. He didn't die before his time. Make a good confession right now. Shout, I will not die before my time. And notice his time was when he was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. In everything, every, well, he's going to bless me when I get to heaven. He is, but Abraham was still on an earth that was dominated and ruled by the curse, yet the Lord blessed Abraham in all things. Man, that's good. Say, that's good. And how did he receive it? He received it according to verse 7. The Bible says the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles. Everybody say, that's us. By faith, preach the gospel to Abraham. So Abraham heard the gospel before Jesus ever went to the cross, before he ever shed his blood. God, through the word, his word, preached the gospel to Abraham. Abraham believed that gospel. And here's the thing. You and I, according to Galatians 3, are included in the blessing of Abraham. We are included. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Now, what happened? Jesus went to the tree, the tree is the cross, and took the curse 
Abraham foresaw it by faith when the gospel, glory to God, when the gospel was preached to him. Jesus hadn't been to the tree yet, but because God preached the word to him and told him in you, all families of the earth will be blessed, Abraham put faith on what God had not done through Jesus yet, yet it worked for him and he lived a blessed life in a land that was cursed. But you and I have heard the gospel. But we heard it on the other side of the cross after Jesus declared it is finished. And the same gospel that we heard after it was finished will produce not just the same results because the Bible says you and I have a better covenant with better promises, but the same gospel, when we believe it like faith, we become the sons of Abraham and we are blessed with faithful Abraham and the curse that could not dominate Abraham cannot dominate the child of God who knows who they are and what Christ has done for them. The problem is we have too many churches who do not know who they are or what Jesus has done. But Christ has redeemed me from the law and he has redeemed me from the curse of the law being made a curse for me that the blessing, say the blessing, that the blessing of Abraham will come upon you, the children of faith. Say, the blessing is on me. Oh, I gotta move fast. Can y'all hear fast? Glory to God. I don't know what in the world will happen in the second service today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, this is called, get your shouting shoes on. Put them on and shine them up. You all right? In the old covenant, it's called the blessing. Blessed when you come in. Blessed when you go out. Blessed, blessed, I will bless you. But in the New Testament, Jesus summed it up when he said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy by promoting the curse that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. In the Old Testament, it's called the blessing. In the New Testament, it's called the abundant life. No matter how you look at it, it is the blessing of the Lord. Make this, say the blessing of God is on me. And she, hear this real quick. You got your listening ears on? Jesus demonstrated this and John declared how he demonstrated it. In 1 John 3, 8, the son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. For this reason, this is the King James, for this reason, the Son of God was manifested that he should or might destroy the works of the devil. So the works of the devil began in the Garden of Eden and then he gained access to become the God of this world. But what he didn't count on was another man, Adam, who was going to show up born of a virgin. God help us. Born of a virgin. No wonder the angels appeared in the clouds the night of the birth of Jesus and declared peace on earth. Goodwill toward men. See, they knew they were declaring peace on an earth where the curse had dominated and Satan had gained authority. But now there is one in the earth who is going to take care of the devil. He is manifested, made known, revealed so that the works of Satan will be destroyed. Everybody say destroyed. destroyed. And here's what it means. Jesus was sent to undo 
what Satan was doing. Say undo. Undo simply means to cancel or reverse or the reverse of the effects or the... <laughs> I can't handle no more of this. All right. To reverse previous action. <laughs> to reverse previous order. To reverse previous action. Can I tell you when Jesus showed up, he came to undo, cancel, and reverse what the devil had did in bringing and promoting a curse. Jesus came to destroy, undo, cancel everything that's in that curse. And Abraham lived in it. And you and I are supposed to live in it. The curse, as far as I am concerned, is, lack of a better term, undid, undone, canceled. Make this confession right now. Say the curse is canceled. In other words, it might come on a 1,000 by one side, 10,000 at the other, but it, it shall not come near me. Now, in your Bible, the Bible talks about those who did not choose to get into the curse. And I can't get into all this because I'm out of time. But the Bible also says in Deuteronomy, God said, I have said it before you, you choose life. Which means you can choose to walk in it or not choose and don't get your eyes on people who have not chosen to walk in it. You get your eyes on your covenant and choose to walk in the blessing. I choose to walk in the blessing of Abraham if nobody else walks in it. Whew. I gotta give you this real quickly. There were those who did not reap it. Israel did not reap it. A whole generation died off in the wilderness. But one man by the name of Caleb said, let us go up at once. We are well able to overcome and take what God said is ours. The reason I point that out is the music team is coming. The way you partake of the blessing, the way you partake of the abundant life is to get in agreement with God that it's yours. So while, eight, while Caleb watched everybody dying, attending the funeral of his friends every single day, they were dying because of unbelief and an unwillingness to choose the blessing that God had poured up, had brought up for them to receive. But Caleb, everybody say, but Caleb. This is how God said it, had it wrote down in the word. He had a different spirit. He was in the earth surrounded by people who were being overtaken by the curse. They were dying early deaths because of the curse they gave themselves over to because of disobedience and unbelief. When God said, go in and take it, they said, we cannot. And as a result, the curse overtook them. But Caleb, everybody say, but Caleb. This man lived and at about, what, 80 years old nearly, he said, I'm going to go in and God has kept me strong. God has kept me alive. God has kept me healthy. And I'm as strong today as I was in my 40s. <laughs> oh, glory, that's a place for you to claim that right there. When I'm 80, I'm going to be strong as I am when I was 40 or strong. I'm going to claim that bless, the blessing of Caleb. And he said, I'm going to go in there. And guess what he did? He went out. I mean, he was like Chuck Norris going through there. It didn't matter if those giants were nine feet tall, 10 feet tall, 12 feet tall. He knew that although he was in a cursed earth, the blessing was upon him. Get off of my land. Get out of my life. And it 
is time. Say, Remy, it is time. Shout, it is high time. See, some of y'all want God to kick the giants out of your life. God gave you the blessing. God gave you the word. He commanded the blessing. It's time for you to get the blessing and put the devil to flight. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God wasn't going to do the fighting. He fought with his word. But when Caleb agreed with the word and put the word in his mouth, there was not a giant, there was not a curse, there was a match for a man of faith who was walking in the blessing of Abraham. And there is not, I gotta quit. There is not a match for the child of God who by faith understands I'm redeemed from the curse. I'm redeemed from the curse. The blessing is on me. Those might be cursed. Those around me might be cursed, but I am not receiving the curse. If CNN says it, if Fox News says it, if the government says it, I'm not embracing the curse. I'm agreeing with God. I'm agreeing with God. I am blessed. Hallelujah. Declare your victory. Declare it. Choose life. I reject death. I refuse death. I refuse the curse. I choose life. Shout it right now. Say, I choose life. Shall I choose life? I refuse death. I refuse the curse. Now clap your hands and rejoice. Right now, bow your heads and pray this prayer with me. If you're unsaved, man, you need to get saved. If you need to rededicate, you need to get it right now. Say it like you mean it. Say, oh God, we receive what you did through Jesus to bring the blessing on us, the abundant life on us. Today, I receive you, Jesus, and everything you bring to the table. I receive it by faith. Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Ushers, step out and come. Don't nobody leave yet. Step out and come. Be right here ready. Mike Hensley, run up here real quick. Mike's going to close the service this morning. Mike, it is dangerous for you to grab this. Yeah, boy, is he ever telling the truth. Woo, what a message. The curse is canceled and the blessings are rolling. Hey, just reach out and grab one. Hey, messages like this, ladies and gentlemen, keep us victorious in the midst of all the negativity. At Grace Fellowship, God is, has blessed us and is continuing to bless us immensely.